And that act alone is, is, is a product of our heart. It's a matter of the heart. It's a reflection of where God has brought us from. One song says, when I look back over my life, Come on, uh -huh, and I think things over, I think about how God has brought me. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. From a mighty long mighty way. Now, I don't know how long your way was, but I know God brought me out. Because yes. Yes. we live in a time that folk need to be delivered. You know, I mean, you lay hands on folk, you pray for folk, you believe in God with folk. But see, we need the power of God to deliver and set folk free. Amen. As he did for us, oh, God is faithful to do for them. So I'm glad that God is faithful. And I'm glad that in the coming year, God can be just as much God as he was yes, yes. in 2015. Lord, I thank you. Thanks. I thank you. As Christians, the, the Bible demands for us to, to be faithful to God and have our affection set on him, our delight on him, and be placed in a, in a mindset of heavenly places. And the book of Colossians it kind of touches on it. It says in Colossians 3 and 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. I understand this. Your affections, your delight, things that you desire. Set your affection on things on above and not on things on the earth. God reminds us, listen, I know where your passion ought to be. Your passion ought to be on me. And if your passion is centered on me, then your affections are in line to my purpose. And when your affections are in line with my purpose, you can delight yourself in me. Oh, glory. Glory, glory, glory. I'm glad David said, listen, oh, taste and see. Amen. He said that the Lord is good. <laughs> Woo, glory. Mm, thank you, Lord, for being good. Jesus reminds us that our first commandment is to love God. In spite of everything else, when all hell breaks loose, when everything looks raggedy and worse and not getting better, we're still commanded to love God. Mm, thank you, Lord. For giving me strength to love you. He told him in Mark 12 and 30, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, is to love God with all your heart. Mm. Now the question should be, where is your heart? Where is your heart? And going into the 2016, we ought to look at know your heart. Know your heart. Know, know what is the, listen, the intent of your heart toward God. Amen. Amen. Because we have had many things come down through the pipe, through the media. Listen, through the, through the uh, TV, the media, the newspaper, all means and forms of communication. Everything is trying to come down to deceive us about God. So you've got to know your heart. You've got to know your affections. You've got to know who to put your confidence in. In. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, know your heart. Lord, I thank you. Help me to examine myself so that I find myself in the right place when it comes to priorities with God. Yeah. Is he priority with you? Does he matter much to you? Listen, understand this. You matter much to God. Amen. And if you matter much to God, God knows God matters. You should, it should matter to you what, how God matters in your life. Glory. <laughs> David was aware of the passion of God and the delight of God and the rumbling of a man's heart. David said, Lord, create in me, in the 51st Psalm, create in me a clean heart. Yeah. He said, God, listen, he said, I, I determined to know my heart so much that God create in me a clean heart. Glory, glory, glory. And renew a right spirit in me. Yes. Whatever it is, God, whatever I got to do, God, fix it. Fix my attitude, fix my delight, fix my passion, set me straight. God, fix me, clean me, wash me. Almost like Peter, when Peter said, Lord, uh -uh, you ain't touching my feet. The Lord said, if I don't touch you, he said, you ain't got no part in me. So our delight, our love, our passion ought to be to say, Lord, know my let me Let me know you more in 2016. God, help me to know my heart. Help me to see myself in the light of your word. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord. 
I want to be more like him. I don't know about you. Yes. I want to be more like him. Glory to God. I want, listen, if I can affect one more person, I'm happy about it. If I can benefit somebody's life, I'm happy about it. If I can be a blessing to my family just one more time, I'm happy about it. Yes. Whew, glory. Yes. If I can just pray for one more person. Amen. Glory to God. I'm happy about it because I recognize it's not the intent of me, but rather the God in me that gives me my intentions. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. See, because our heart is fickle. Our heart flip-flops. Our passions flip-flop. So God said, you got to keep that thing under control. you got to keep it in light to my word. you got to keep it refreshed and renewed so that you know what you need to know when you need to know it. Jesus was speaking in Matthew 15 and 8. He was telling them because they were concerned about the outward so much that they weren't dealing with the inward. They were more concerned about washing their hands than cleaning their heart. They said, listen, if you don't wash your hands, he said, you're not clean, you're not sanctified, you're not spiritual. But Jesus said, listen, it's not the outward that's destroying you. It's the inward that's destroying you. The inward is where everything proceeds from. He said, listen, you've got to know your heart. You've got to know what you're dealing with. You've got to know your attitude. You've got to know your sensitivities. He told them in Matthew 15 and 18, but those things who proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, Blasphemy. He said, these are things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defile not a man. He said, listen, all, listen, all the things that would destroy you, he said, can proceed from the heart. So he said, the problem is not the outward. The problem is the inward. So Lord, in 2016, help me to know my heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. See, because as much as we might say sometimes, I love everybody, the Lord will allow somebody to come in your life that you almost got to bite your hand <laughs> to deal with them. God knows the level, but God says, listen, I know your heart. And I'll bring situations and circumstances in your life to test your resolve to love me. Mm. What did he tell Peter? He said, do you love me? Peter said, I love you more than these, Lord. He said, I'll, I'll go anywhere and anything. I will never deny you. He said, uh -huh. give me a minute. God says, know your heart. Know your heart. Examine your heart. Because we have so much stuff coming down the pipe that it questions your loyalty to God. So you got to keep, oh, what you say, keep the line clear. Amen. You got, you got to walk with an attitude of discretion and integrity that is above and beyond what folk do in the natural. Amen. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us Christians is that we're different and folk know us by our love. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Know your heart in 2016. Moses saw God face to face. Actually, Moses saw the, the hindsight of God. But understand this, even though God allowed him to see him at all, God said, listen, I don't want to deal with you face to face. I want to deal with you heart to heart. Because I search the heart. And because I search the heart, I'll get your attention because I know what you really mean when you say you said what you meant. Woo, glory, glory. The Lord himself knows and sees our substance. He knows us, so it's good to know the Lord and allow the Lord to know you in, the, in, in your weak moments, in your high moments, in your times of despair. Lord, you know me. David said, Lord, you know me. He said, you know my down sittings? You know my uprisings? He said, Lord, you know me. Yeah. Ooh, Lord, I can't hide from you. If I take the wings of the morning, I'm not hidden. If I put myself in the midst of hell, I'm not hidden. He said, Lord, you know me. Let the Lord know your heart in 2016. God's not looking for a sham. He's looking for you being real. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart 
is deceitful mm. above all things, not some things, but the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Lord have mercy. Except God give me the knowledge to know me. I would never know me. I'd be deceived thinking I'm wonderful when I'm not. So Lord, know, help me to know my heart Amen. in 2016. Yes. And then the Lord says, but I, the Lord, search the heart. He said, I try the reins, uh -huh, even to give to every man according to the fruit of his doing. Glory, fruit of his ways and the fruit of his doing. Interestingly, God said, listen, I know you and I give the reward according to your actions. Mm. So he said, the fruit you receive in your living is a result of your actions because I know your heart. Mm. Search me, Lord. We used to sing that. Yes. Yes. Shine a light from heaven on my soul. Search me, Lord. And God continually and forever searches them yeah. that believe. Yes. Ooh, Lord, know your heart in 2016. Lord, help me to know my heart. Yes. So that I can love you and love you with my whole heart. Yes. We can't afford to be heartless. Mm. We can't afford to be brokenhearted. Because God knows our heart. So any disgust we may have in living, God says, I knew you before it even happened. Yeah. I knew you when you was broken. Yeah. And we can't afford to be unresponsive to God because God said, I knew you when you called my name and didn't really believe it. You called it in spite of. And the fact God said, I still knew you. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We must seek the Lord with our whole hearts. Yeah. Because God knows us from the inside out. I think one of the greatest prayers for me was Lord have mercy. Because God knew my dilemma. He knew my crisis. He knew me. I can't hide from it. You can't hide from it. And I'm so glad about that. That even in spite of my mess. Even in spite of him seeing my intentions at that time were not right. He still said, come, I love you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Amen. Mm. He said, because I know your heart. <coughs> he said, I give to every man according to his ways and the fruit of his doing. It is said of David, you know, David was called the God of the young age. But God knew his heart. God knew that it didn't matter that his brothers were older and bigger and wiser and had more wisdom. God knew David's heart. And oftentimes we get intimidated by people because they might have size on us or they might have experience on us or they might have tenure on us. But God says, I know your heart. He said, I elevate who I want to elevate. I bring down who I want to bring down. He said, listen, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time because he knows yeah. your heart. Amen. David was a young man and God elevated him to kingship. Acts, the latter part of Acts, the 13th chapter, the 22nd verse says, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill my will. All seven brothers passed by Samuel. And Samuel says, God, isn't this the one? And I was reading that today and I was amazed that Samuel looked at Jesse and said, you don't have any more children. <laughs> See, because God knows the heart. He said, no, the one I chose has a heart for me. He said, I found me a man who was yet a boy whose heart is after me. And God told Samuel, don't you sit down. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I thank God. You know, listen, if God loves you, he'll go to bat for you. And because God loves us, we don't have to worry about being desolate or left for lost. God will fix it. If God got to find the lost and found, he'll find you. God told Samuel, you 
stand there until they come back. He said, listen, you stand there. He said, Lord, seven sons already have come forward. He said, but stand there. When David came in, the oil began to flow. Because God found a man, glory to God, after his own heart. That didn't make David perfect. That didn't make David a man. But it made him God's choice. And God said, I chose you because of your heart. Glory, glory, glory. When we love God with our whole heart, God has promised in his word to reward us for our devotion. Glory, glory, glory. Whatsoever you do, do it with your whole heart. Do it heartily. Know your heart in 2016. Do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. You shouldn't have to apologize for loving God. You shouldn't have to apologize for doing right. Do it as unto God and not unto men because the Bible says, knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. God said there's a reward in store for you that believe because you love me and your intent is with your whole heart. He said when you seek to know me with your whole heart, God said I release what you stand in need of. I benefit you because I search your heart. Want to do right. God knows when you want to do wrong because God searches the heart. So in 2016, my desire is that God would know me and know my heart so that I can affect them that I come in contact with because of the love of God in my heart. Mm. When I do what God called me to do, I want to do it under the unction of the love of God. I want to do it because God says it's right, not because I think it's right. I want to do it because God says so. I want to know God in the heart. I want to have a heart to heart with God and not with man. 2016, I'm believing God for, hey listen, multiplied blessing because I know God is able because the spirit of God allows me to see the heart of God and to know that God has my back. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine and I'm done. He said to me, he said, if God didn't want you to hear what he continues to speak in your ear, he's not trying to make you sick or give you a collar in our ear. God is speaking his purpose in your life so you know that that which he has spoken is yet to come to pass. Amen. So I said, Lord, help me to know your heart. Help me to have an ear to hear. Woo, glory. What the Spirit saith unto the church and unto them that believe. Know your heart, beloved. 2016, know your heart. And that involves knowing your God. Amen. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord, Thank you. for having a heart. Thank you. I want to be like David where God has said, I found a man. Mm. I found a woman. I found a believer after my own heart. Yes. Yes. Know your heart, beloved. Yes. Seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God and his righteousness yes. and all other things shall be added unto you. Yes. Know your heart, beloved. Know your heart, for God is searching you daily yes. so that the love of God yes. can bless you not only in 2015, which is about to leave us, but 2016, which is a brand new day. A brand new opportunity to love God with your whole heart. Thank God for 2016. Thank God for the favor God gives us. Thank God for the opportunity to know him with our heart in 2016. God bless you, Lord. God bless you.